Hi there, Andy Modler back with the follow-up video, the final in a series of three, of a model aircraft that I first showed in the spring of 2014. Uh, we're into 2015 now, just, it's the 3rd of January in a very cold Athens, Greece. There's ice on the ground outside, so that gives you an idea of the temperature. Anyway, I won't go into too much detail uh, of the plan, but I'll just quickly say that I downloaded it off a site uh, from the UK, uh, Outer Zone is the name of the, of the, of the website. Um, it's of an American design model aircraft, Control Line, from 1951. It's from the Dimeco's All American Senior, the Torpedo. Now, in the final video that I uh, showed last summer, I think 2014, I had this model air engine in the, uh, the model that was just about to uh, fly for its maiden flight. Now this model engine is a, uh, an original Frog 500, British design, British made, again from the 1950s. It um, belonged to my father and he flew control line models uh, as a young guy, I'm sure, uh, back in the 50s. Right, um, the engine is a plain bearing engine. Now I'm pretty certain that it was not designed to run on the um, sy synthetic oils that we find. I don't know if there were synthetic oil model engine fuels back in the 50s, but um, being sympathetic with the model engine, uh, I went and got myself some uh, castor oil and no rocket science, just added some castor oil into my normal fuel mix that I know is 100% synthetic oil. Um, for me personally, the maiden flight went very well indeed. I managed to do manoeuvres with this model that I've never managed in the past. Okay, I have to say that I've flown predominantly since the very early 80s uh, um, radio control model aircraft. This is the first time for some 30 odd more years that I've gone back and tried my hand uh, at control line model aircraft. Um, so, the uh, like I say, the the model performed perfectly. Okay. Um, I uh, managed to do loops, uh, bunts, uh, wing overs, uh, inverted flight. Um, uh, I tried to do some triangle and square maneuvers. I did figure of eights, uh, all, all quite easily done with the model. Um, the limitations on the triangle and square maneuvers was on my part. But I realized that obviously towards the end of the flight, I was going to soon run out of fuel. Um, and uh, so I just carried on flying the right way up, uh, anti-clockwise. I'm right-handed, so that's the way that I fly. And then in flight, at the time, I thought that what had happened was that the propeller nut, the washer, the and the propeller had come off. It came off in flight. I'd uh, I'd got a couple of my radio control model uh, flying buddies to help me uh, with the the maiden flight. They were very interested in seeing this flying because they'd not seen. Uh, in Greece, it's, it's not a done thing, uh, control line flying. So they were quite interested in to see how it went. Anyway, like I said, the propeller nut wash and the propeller came off in flight, and so no great disasters, I just landed. I went over to my friends and asked, uh, did you see where the bits went, you know, where we can collect them and pick them up? And they said, you're not gonna have any trouble with uh, finding the bits, we found them straight away, because if you can see, that is what happened. The propeller nut did not come off. The actual crankshaft sheared where the hole is for the fuel intake to then go up into the uh, workings of the engine. So uh, I'm not quite sure why it sheared. Perhaps the uh, the age of the engine. It had not actually been started for some 30 odd years before the maiden flight. Um, uh, the metallurgy of the uh, of the metal, I'm sure, back in the 50s uh, was not as uh, as uh, good as it is these days. Anyway, so. Um, being a, a model of uh, that era, the, the 1950s, you're not going to be able to just phone up somewhere and get a part off the shelf. So I went onto the internet, I had a look around, and I didn't get any joy there either. There were some chat forums, but uh, they, they, um, for, for getting a single part that I just wanted the crankshaft, uh, it wasn't all that helpful. Then I remembered that I uh, read in a past modeling magazine of mine an article of um, a company in the UK, now this is a uh, modelling magazine in question from 2000, so it's uh, quite a, quite a, I never throw any modelling magazines away uh, for this very reason, they come in quite handy. Right, okay, the Rustler, Rustler um, replica engines, there's a company in the UK, um, I think it's run by a guy called Ian Russell, 
Now, they do, as well as the Frog 500, many other replica engines, but this article shows here a spark ignition Frog 500, but I do know that they also manufacture um, a uh, glow plug version. I'm not sure if the crankshaft is the same. That's the part that I'm after, obviously. Uh, I'm going to have to get uh, do some investigation, get in touch with the company, and if the dimensions of the replica are the same as the original, then I'm in luck. If not, I might have to get myself a replica Frog 500. Um, okay, so that's uh, that's uh, the story of the uh, the Frog 500 engine. Um, the engine in the model that you see here is from my early radio control days. Like I say, back in the very early 80s, I bought this engine. It's an Enya, an Enya 40. Um, here's the box. Okay, for many of you will probably recognise this. I don't throw any of my engine boxes away. Um, I don't know why. It's uh, I've got a stack of them. It keeps a record. It gives you a record of model engines that you've uh, may have forgotten that you have bought in the past and maybe sold on or moved on. But uh, so yeah, that's the uh, the box for this engine. Right, it's a ringed piston engine. Um, it uh, doesn't obviously have the power of modern 40 size engines, but it flies the model quite well. Being the, a greater mass, it's got a large silencer, whereas the Frog 500 doesn't. You can work out that the mass of that is great, so I've had to put some tail weight on the, uh, the model engine, or uh, the model plane rather. Um, but it's, it's had many flights with, the, with the, the Enya and worked okay. I had to do some modifications for the carburetor. Like I say, it's a radio control engine from, in its, uh, in its, um, fr from the box. But uh, I had to make or design a way of putting a needle valve and a plain open venturi. Uh, I do own a metal turning lathe, and I wanted to find something that I wouldn't have to work too much. And some of the most of the work was already done for me because it's only a small metal turning lathe. Um, so I looked around and found this. It's uh, an adapter for a water hose to go into a block. Okay, and I realised that I could turn the large diameter down to the diameter that would then go in nicely to the uh, to the casting of the engine. I left a one millimetre shoulder so it would stop. Turned this down. Okay, left the internal diameter the same. Uh, two s uh, threaded holes on either side for the screws to hold it in place. One hole then straight through for the needle valve, and it runs the engine uh, very well. It's uh, got no problems. Okay. Well, that's the story of the, uh, the maiden flight. Right, um, the project that I'm hopefully going to start for the, um, this year, spring 2015, is again from a plan that I obtained off the Outer Zone uh, website. Now, it's uh, again a control line model aircraft. It's the Blue Pants. Yeah, I don't know if many of you or some of you will recognise this model. Um, I'd uh, heard about it before and only since getting back into control line flying last year I thought to myself yeah I'd like to fly uh, fly uh, a model of uh, of the blue pants well you're not going to get I'm sure I, I'm not sure well I'm not sure perhaps off the internet you'll be able to find building instructions but anybody who's going to build one of these themselves doesn't really need it's quite straightforward doesn't really need building instructions sort of a a to b and b to c and all that but I, I thinking back to um, some modeling magazines again that uh, that I've kept, I found two articles where it had some pictures and describing the blue pants. Okay, this is a model magazine. Again, let's see where's this one from? Uh, from 2002. Okay, it's an article about uh, a gentleman who flies um, radio control, but went back around second time around. Um, he decided to go and build himself a control line model aircraft and this is the blue pants okay um, goes into a little bit of detail so you do you can find articles on past models that um, uh, are no longer in circulation the other magazine that I found an article on the blue pants was from the AMI okay like I say I never throw any modeling magazines away they do come in handy okay this is predominantly an article about a method from uh, for flying your solo control line model aircraft flying solo a release mechanism but the um, the model that uh, was being demonstrated is from the blue pants okay these are some pictures that uh, are in the magazine 
All right, so, and it goes into a little bit, de bit of detail, the history of the blue pants. So you do, you can find articles if you look around. Okay then, well that's just it. Then uh, have some uh, have some nice flying for the 2015.